Okay, step three and four asks us to get um, the side pocket. And you've cut four of the side pocket, but we have a note that says you've cut four of them. Two will be referred to as the pockets and two will be referred to as the pocket facing. Um, as you get better with pattern, like if you were running short on fabric, you could figure out that you could cut two of these out of the stuff you want out the, on the outside and then two on the inside of something different. But right now we have four of all the same. So all we have to do is make sure that they go right sides together. So with right sides together, pin side pocket, which for me is piece 12, but could be view, uh, piece eight or piece three, depending on your um, pattern. Um, you're gonna pin along the top and you are going to sew along the top. And this first time we are going to sew with a half an inch seam allowance. So along this whole way, I've already pinned my second one here, so we're gonna do two at the same time. Good job pinning. Thank you. Now, if you're like me and you're not a super straight cutter, that's okay. As long as you stitch straight, your ultimate line will be straight. If you put the pins in there, you got to pull them out as you go. Yeah, you're supposed to. That's the... Or not. <laughs> Honestly, so I had a mentor FC, I was taught to always pull out the sewing pins, but I had a mentor FCS teacher who taught middle school and she never taught her kids to take out the pins. She always taught them to, well, a big part of that is that you pin perpendicular to the thing you're sewing. Cause she said the chance of them hitting that is very rare. And if it, you do hit it, just change the needle. Um, you can take your own philosophy with that. Is it easy to change the needle? I, if, if I knew that it was always going to hit the pin, I would always just remember to take the pin out. But sure. The chances of you, it's pretty easy to change. Some people like to live dangerously, Some I guess. Some people like to live dangerously. Um, now it says turn pockets right side out and press. That's really simple. But once again, to get nice, crisp um, lines. Take, take your tape off. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I can take the tape off. I want to first butterfly the seam open, and then I will turn it right side out. So I'm first putting it over my ironing board, and I'm pulling to make sure that that seam is on the really. It's not like crumpled up in there. Pull it tight. Yeah, pull it tight, and then open up this seam. Press it open the whole way. And then I'm gonna check on this side that it's not wrinkly. Nope. So now I'm gonna fold it back right at this. Once again. Oh, you know what? This is the step for my elastic, and I don't have my elastic prepped. Doesn't say to put it in yet. No. Oh, does it not? That's no. Good. good deal. But I will take time to point something out here. So this next step asks you to sew five eighths of an inch away from the top edge. This is assuming you found and bought like the, what this pattern said, half inch wide elastic. Um, if you did not find 
half inch wide elastic, you need to go one eighth of an inch wider than whatever your elastic is. So assuming we have half inch elastic, you're gonna sew it five eighths. If you don't have half inch elastic, um, you take whatever you have and add an eighth to make your seam allowance. So um, this time I'm not pinning because they're already held together by the previous seam, but I'm just top stitching a line. And that creates our casing to hold the elastic and a casing is a shaping device, so you should. Which is one that of your you standards. I know this might be going back in the class a little bit, but with a long piece of fabric like that, how do you make sure that you're sewing straight? Um, I'm, I'm, I am you, just- You keep the edge of it right on the- Yeah, so I've got thing. it matched up with five eighths here. If you have a hard time seeing that, um, you can take, I, apparently I just love painter's tape. You can take painter's tape and mark it there. Um, the other thing I try not to do is I try not to oversteer because honestly, the more you steer, the more crooked it looks versus like even I've been sewing for years. And if you really took a, a measuring tape to all my seams, they wouldn't be perfect, perfect. But plus or minus of eighth of an inch is not that bad. I kind of liken it to the way like if you're driving, most cars have a pull or a direction that they drift. And as long as you're not like always pulling back on the wheel, like jerkily, it's okay. Okay, so we have those two lines of top stitching. To trim up your threads. Um, now it folds, fold each pocket half lengthwise to find center, mark with a pin, chalk, or with a washable fabric marker. I am just gonna Mark it with a pin. So we're folding in half and then we're putting a pin there and folding in a half again and putting a pin here. And then the next thing it wants us to do is base side and lower edges together between the casing seam and finish lower raw edge with a zigzag stitch or serger. Okay, so what it wants us to do is it wants to us to sew these sides together so that as we're working with them they don't accidentally like one doesn't actually flip back here and you don't catch it later on. Baste. To baste means a temporary stitch so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our stitch length and turn it up to a four and we're also gonna sew you're gonna sew at less than your general seam allowance so hopefully that when you sew your regular seam later you don't see it on the face um, but if you do, you've sewn it in a four and you can rip it out easily. But my general seam allowance is a half an inch, so I'm going to sew this at um, a quarter of an inch. So I'm going down, around, and up. You so not, you're, you're not intending to rip this out. But if it shows up but on you the face, could. yes, it's easy to. And actually, if you want... You can skip going around the bottom because I know we're going to zigzag the bottom of the edge later. So if you want, you could just base down the sides, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm always going from this sewn side down because this is where I have my uneven edges and if they become a little bit more uneven, I want them to be at the bottom here, not where I've already sewn. Speed racer. Yeah, well, don't want, apparently steps one and two took 20 minutes and that's crazy. Um, I don't want this to be a 24 hour project. So if you've looked, I've basted down the sides. Um, 
then if you have a serger, like that's awesome because that cuts and finishes the edges, but most people don't. So you are gonna zigzag along the bottom edge. A zigzag is a way to finish a raw edge. Um, it won't be showing on the outside. I know from reading through the pattern directions that the reason it wants us to zigzag this is we're going to be um, turning it up and it will always be in the inside of your bag. So it just wants it finished. I'm gonna actually have you come around because I want to show them um, what to do to zigzag an edge. I'm gonna stay on the four for the stitch length. Actually, I might turn it down to a two and a half, um, but I'm gonna select the zigzag stitch. Um, then I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna make it the widest or a wider zigzag, so a four on a zigzag. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna look where your needle is hitting. When it hits on the right side, you want it to hit just the kiss the edge of the fabric. So that's, it's not really a seam allowance, but you're just trying to, you're hitting in the fabric with the left stitch and just on the edge of it with your right stitch. If you miss one, no big deal. No. If you miss a lot though, your machine will gnarl up. <laughs> White was a dumb choice to sew on white. Um, not for you. When you're sewing, I always like to match the color thread to the thing because mistakes show up less. But for just demoing, I should have picked up. a contrast. Yeah. So you see how I'm hitting just the edge there. Yep. And that's a way to make a finished edge. So you do that on both pieces. And then you're done with steps three and four. scene.